Friends, welcome back once again for your lesson. This is the lesson for class 9 ABC and the subject is Geography. Uh, today we do a new chapter dear students and that is Denudation. You can see here the chapter Denudation, the work of river and wind. Okay, so uh, if you just see very simple terms, what does denudation mean? Denudation is basically the erosion of the earth's surface by wind, water, waves, etc. So, denudation means the wearing away of the earth's surface by the natural agents like wind, water, and so on. So, now let's see the first one uh, as we go deeper into the chapter here. First part, what is gradation now? What is gradation? Now, gradation is the leveling of the earth's surface by natural process. That means when the earth's surface is made into a flat land, when a mountain is made into a plain, when a plateau is made into a plain, which takes thousands of years, it is called as gradation. Therefore, gradation is the leveling of the earth's surface by natural process. And what causes gradation? What causes the land to break down and turn into a flat area? Wind, water, waves and ice. They are also called as the agents of gradation. So, gradation is the leveling of the earth's surface by natural process. When the land is made flat, a land which is uneven, is made into a flat land because of erosion by wind, water, waves and ice, is called as gradation. Now, what are the agents of gradation? I just told you. The agents of gradation are wind, water, waves and ice. The agents of gradation are wind, water, waves and ice. See, wind, water, waves and ice. Now, gradation involves two processes. One is degradation and the other one is aggradation. Once again, I repeat dear students, gradation involves two processes. One is degradation and the other one is aggradation. What does degradation mean? Degradation means to break down the rocks. Degradation means to break down the rocks. Either because of rain, either because of wind, either because of uh, glaciers, ice, or either because of waves. See? But degradation means when the rocks are broken down by these factors like wind, water, waves, and ice. It is called as degradation, to break down the rocks. And then after the rocks are broken down, they are taken to another place. That process is called as aggregation. Aggregation, transportation and deposition of the broken down particles. Transportation and deposition of the sediments is called as aggregation. So when degradation and aggregation combine together, we have what is called as gradation. Because gradation is the leveling of the earth's surface by natural process. So I just read you. The agents of gradation are natural processes, forces like wind, water, waves, and ice, causing degradation. See, it causes degradation, breaking down of rocks, and aggregation, filling up of the low lying areas by erosion, transportation, and deposition of the materials on the earth's surface. That means gradation is the leveling of the earth's surface by natural processes like wind, water, waves, and ice. The agents of gradation are wind, water, waves, and ice. Now, gradation involves two processes. One is degradation, which means to break down the rocks, and the other one is aggregation, which means to transport and deposit the rocks. So, when degradation and aggregation takes place together, it takes place together, then we have what is called as gradation occurring. Then the land becomes a flat area. Now, functions of the agents of gradation. What does the agents of gradation do? What does wind, water, waves and ice do? What do they do? They erode the land. Erosion takes place. After they are eroded, then they transport the material sediments. Transportation takes place. And after the sediments are transported, ultimately they are deposited. So, deposition takes place. So, the functions of the agents of gradations are erosion to erode the particles, transport to take the particles to another place and deposition to make the sediments settle somewhere far off into the land. Whereby these are the three processes that takes place. See, erosion, 
transportation and deposition takes place because of the agents of gradation. Now let's see the work of the river. What is the work of the river? See, a river is a natural channel of water that flows down the hill towards the ocean due to the force of gravity. That means when the water flows downhill, when the water flows downhill due to the force of gravity, it is called as a river. River means when the water flows down the hill from the hilltop towards the plain, it is termed as a river. Now, when see when it rains, what happens when it rains? Some of the water will percolate, sink into the ground. When it rains, when we have rainfall, some of the water will sink under the ground, and this water will go and get stored into the underground as underground water resource. See, when it rains, some of the water will sink into the mud, into the ground, and go deep underneath. Some of it will evaporate. Some of the water evaporates. And then the remaining amount of the water, the remaining water will form into small streams. They form into small streams. When it rains, some of the water percolates that we sink into the surface and remains in the form of groundwater. Some evaporates and the remaining forms into small streams. See? So the remaining water forms into small streams. And as these small streams go further down, they are joined by other streams. And when they are joined by the other streams, they become bigger and bigger. And they turn into a big river. See, these small streams flow down and join with other streams to form bigger rivers. Apart from the rainwater, the river is also fed by the melting of the glaciers. Besides the rainwater falling into the river, how does the river get water? The river also gets water from the melting of the glaciers. When the glaciers melt, it turns into water and therefore it adds up to the volume in the river. That means it adds more water towards the, to the river as they flow down. Now let's go further and see the erosion work of the river. What work does the river do? How does it erode the land? See, we told you the agents of gradation. The land is broken down because of rain, water, waves and ice. So how does the land erode or river erode the land? The erosion work of the river is done in the following ways. First one, how does the river erode the land? Corrosion. It's a chemical erosion. Corrosion means chemical erosion, whereby the lands are the, the, the rocks are broken down. See? The chemical erosion by running water is called corrosion. In this process, what happens? In this process, water charged with carbon dioxide can easily dissolve the soluble carbonate minerals present in the rocks. Example, limestone, gypsum and rock salt can be dissolved. See? The first way in which the river erodes or river causes erosion is by a process called as corrosion where a chemical reaction takes place because of the presence of carbon dioxide whereby the rocks that are there are broken down. For instance, limestone, gypsum and rock salt are broken down. This is one process whereby erosion of river takes place. The other one is abrasion. So what is abrasion now? The abrasion is basically when the river flows down, when the river flows down, the rock particles, the gravels, the pebbles that are there in the water will flow down. As they flow down, they erode the land. They erode the land as they flow down, whereby the width of the river increases. There is more lateral erosion and there is also more vertical erosion as well. See, there is more lateral erosion as well as there is more vertical erosion as the river flows down. So that is point number two. Abrasion. Abrasion means when the water flowing down erodes the land, making it wider and deeper. See? Abrasion. The rock particles carried by the river wear away the additional rock fragments of valley floor and sides of the valley by scratching and scrapping. Sideway erosion makes the river wider and downward erosion makes the river deeper. See? That is the second process, abrasion. And then attrition, what is attrition? Attrition basically means when the rocks move down, 
when the river flows down, the rock particles, the sand, the sand particles, the pebbles, the gravels that are there, they bang against each other. Friction takes place, and ultimately they are made into smaller particles. They are put into smaller uh, sediments. See, they are made into smaller, or they are broken down into smaller particles, smaller, smaller pieces, sediments. Because as they roll down, as the move, river moves down, constantly they bang against each other, and therefore, thereby they are broken down. See. The rock fragments which are carried by the river as it, as it slowed are broken down into small pieces while rolling down running water. As they roll down, they collide with each other and gradually become smaller and rounded. This is the third erosional work of the river. The first one is corrosion, the chemical erosion. Second one is abrasion, where the rock particles erode the river. Laterally as well as vertically, thereby making it broader and deeper. And the third erosional work of the river is attrition, whereby when the river flows down, when the water flows down, the rock particles that are there in the river as it's going down, bang against each other and they are broken up into smaller particles, whereby they are made smaller and rounder. This is the third erosional work of the river. Now let's see the transportation work of the river. Transportation work of the river. After doing the erosion work, the next activity of the river is to transfer the eroded materials. So once the rock particles are broken down, once the land is eroded, once the pebbles and gravels are made smaller, now what happens? Transportation takes place. They are taken down. So in that process, what happens? What happens in the process of transportation? The first one is, the load which is soluble in water is carried in solution. As the water flows down, the water will take all the sediments, the silt, the mud, the clay, everything is taken down. See, in the form of solution. Second one, the finer rock particles such as silt, mud and mud are transported in suspension, making the water look muddy or brownish in color. That is when the river is going down. Because the rock particles have been broken down into fine particles like silt and mud, whereby these silt and mud makes the water very muddy. See, they will make, make the water very, very muddy or brownish in color because it flows on the surface, whereby the water's color changes and looks very muddy or brownish. It's because of the, the presence of mud and silt that has been taken down by the river. Third one, the larger and heavier rock particles like gravels, pebbles, and boulders roll or slide on the floor of the river under the influence of gravity and force of water. That means as the water is river is going down, the heavy boulders, the heavy rocks, the gravels which are heavy, they are at the bottom of the river. They roll down at the bottom of the river. The finer particles are on top. And very fine particles, they remain on the topmost. We are by changing the color of the water as well. So see, as the river flows down, the heavier particles, the heavier rocks, the gravels, and so on, will roll down at the bottom of the riverbed. They roll down. They will not float. They will roll down as they move down towards the plain. Number four, some rock fragments move down the river by jumping and hopping. This process is called as saltation and the rock materials transported by this method is called as saltation load. So sometimes even the rocks which are taken down, as the river flows down, some of the rocks will jump and hop as they move down. That process is called as saltation. That process is called as saltation. And the load, the rocks which are taken down in that process is called as saltation load. So this is how the transportation of rock particles take place as the river flows down. Now, the transportation power of the river depends on various factors. What are the factors? What are the factors which determine the transportational power of the river? There are three important factors. Velocity or speed of the river, first one. Velocity or speed of the river. If the speed of the river is very, very, very fast, if the river flows at a very high speed, then what happens? The transportation power is more. It can be transported for a greater distance, faster. Second one is the volume of the water. If there is plenty of water in the river, there is more transportation taking place. More rock particles, more sediments will be transported if the water is more in the river. And then the third one begins, size of the particles of the rocks moving. If the rocks are bigger in size, 
they go for a shorter distance. They are transported for a shorter distance. And if the rock particles are smaller, minute sediments, they are transported for a longer distance. So therefore, the transportation power of the river depends on three factors. See, speed of the river, volume of the water in the river, and the third, the particles that are present in the river. These three factors determine the transportation power of the river. Now let's go back further and see the deposition work of the river. See, we saw the erosion work of the river, how the river erodes the land. As the river flows down, how it erodes the land. Then we saw the transportation power, we just saw the transportation method, how the river, river transports the different particles as it moves down. And then the third one, deposition work of the river. After the sediments have been transported, after the rocks have been transported, one takes place, what occurs? Deposition occurs. Then slowly the river will start to slowly by slowly start to deposit the sediments. The heavier sediments are deposited first, then the smaller ones later, and then the very fine particles are taken very far off and deposited far into the uh, river, down into the plains. So let's see the first one. The river transports the load or sediments to its carrying capacity depending upon its velocity. As its velocity decreases, the transported materials get deposited. That means when the river's speed decreases, when the river's speed decreases, at that time the river starts to deposit the sediments. The heavier sediments start to get deposited. Because they, can be, they can't be uh, pushed out any further, they can't be carried out any further. Therefore, because the speed of the river has gone down, what happens is, even the load of the river, the particles, the sediments, the rocks that are there in the river, also slowly starts to get deposited. The velocity of a river decreases due to the following reasons. Why does the river decrease its velocity? Number one. When the slope of the land decreases as the river flows down from the mountain to the plain, due to the excess load of sediments in the river, the carrying capacity of the water decreases as the river flows down, leaving the sediments as deposited. See the first one. See when the slope of the land decreases, how does deposition take place, or why does deposition of the river take place? Deposition of the river takes place mainly and firstly is because of the slope of the land. In the mountains, the lands are very steep, and therefore, when the river flows down, it has high velocity, high power, and all these sediments are taken down. Then, in the plains, what happens? The river's speed goes down, and therefore, slowly by slowly, it starts to deposit the sediments. So, how does the deposition of the river take place? The deposition of the river takes place mainly, number one, is because of the slope of the land. If the land is flat, then the river will start to deposit the sediments. The river is unable to take the sediments further up, further down, sorry, down to, down to the ocean, whereby it starts to deposit the sediments. Number two, due to the slope, if there is too much of sediments in the river, when there is too much of sediments in the river, at that time also, the river will start to deposit the sediments. So these two are the reasons why the deposition of work of the river takes place. The river starts to deposit its sediments because of these two factors. Number one, slope of the land. If the land is flat, then the river is not able to carry the sediments any further and it starts to deposit the sediments. Number two is because of the size of the particles, drop particles. If the load in the river is more, then what happens? The river starts to deposit its sediments. Now stages of a river course. Now we know that the river course has three important stages. When the river flows down from the mountain till it reaches the ocean, it has three stages. So let's see here. Most of the rivers originate in the high mountains and hills and ends near the ocean. Thus the river undergoes various stages as it flows from the hills to the plains. This is classified into three stages, the upper course, the middle course and the lower course. So when the river flows down the hill till it reaches the plains, there are three courses that take place in between. The upper course, the middle course and the lower course. So these are the three stages of a river. So let's see the first one, the upper course. This is also called as the youthful stage. 
The reason why the Sakur Course is also called as the youthful stage is because at this at this junction, at this particular point, when the river is going down from the hills down, it is very, very violent. It has a lot of energy, it has a lot of speed, it has a lot of velocity. Because of which a lot of erosion work takes place as well. Then it's like a, a young child. When a child is very young, it's very active, energetic, jumping, hopping, running. You know, you can make a child do so many different types of uh, drills. Still, the child has a lot of energy. It's because the child is young in its youthful stage. Same thing with the river. At this very early stage, in the upper course, which is also called as the youthful stage, the river is very violent, very strong. Violent in terms, it flows down very fast. There's a lot of power in the river. A lot of erosion takes place with the river. Therefore, what happens? Different features are formed, like the B-shaped valleys are formed. See, the waterfalls are formed. Let's see here. The river in this stage is very swift and violent. Number two, the volume of the water is not much, but its erosion capacity is very high. Can you know the land? See, vertical erosion is prominent due to which valleys of different shapes and size are created. And number four, the swift flowing rivers transport large rocks and boulders which get smaller, smoother and rounded by rubbing against each other. So see, when the river flows down in this particular state, in the youthful state, in the upper course, the river is very, very powerful. It has high speed and velocity. A lot of erosion takes place. See, a lot of erosion takes place. Mainly vertical erosion becomes deeper and deeper. See, number next one. See? Number three. The river that's flowing down has a lot of energy, I told you. Because of which a lot of rocks are taken down, a lot of sediments are carried down. This is in the early stage, that is the upper course or the youthful stage. Now, the landforms that are formed in this upper course. What are the landforms that are formed in this upper course of the youthful stage? We have two landforms. One is a V-shaped valley and the other one is a waterfall. So we can see the V-shaped valley, see? When the water flows down from the mountains, see? Because of the high speed, because of the velocity, lateral erosion, all this area gets eroded. See? This area gets eroded. At the same time, what happens? Vertical erosion also takes place, whereby it becomes deep down. See? It becomes deep and forms into a valley. That is because of the lateral erosion as well as the vertical erosion that is taking place here. See? This is formed in areas of high rainfall and soft rocks. Due to this, the sides of the rivers get eroded and widened at the top, resulting to the formation of a V-shaped valley. That means a V-shaped valley is mainly formed in areas where the rainfall is very high and more importantly, where they have soft rocks. Because the rocks are soft, the rocks are broken down, erosion takes place. Whereby the lands are formed into a V-shaped sea. It forms into a V-shaped valley. Why? Because the lands and rocks are very soft, lateral erosion, the river becomes wider and wider and at the same time what happens? It becomes deeper and deeper, whereby resulting in the formation of a V-shaped valley. This is the land feature that is formed in the upper course. It's because of the high speed of the wind, which causes uh, a huge amount of erosion laterally as well as vertically. Number two is also waterfall, see? Sometimes when the water flows down, and as I told you, because of the presence of the soft rocks, they are eroded more. And when the soft rocks are eroded more, it results in the formation of waterfalls in place here. When the river tumbles down almost vertically from a considerable height, it forms into a waterfall. See? When the water falls from a considerable height down, it forms into a waterfall. Now, how has this formed? At one point of time, this area had rocks, but they were soft rocks. So these soft rocks were eroded, and then what happens? They became more and more deeper and deeper, the rocks are eroded more and more and more and more and because this was a hard rock, see, hard rock, soft rock is it's a soft rock. So when the soft rocks are eroded more and more and more and more, the water started to drop down at a considerable height. At a considerable height, the water started to drop down, whereby resulting to the formation of a waterfall. So that is a second feature that is formed in the upper course of a river. Now middle course. It's also called as a mature state. 
At this stage, if you see the river, the river flows very, very smoothly. It doesn't flow as it's flowing in the upper course. The river flows down very, very smoothly. Gently flows down. Like a person when you reach in your, in your, in your uh, middle, middle stage. When you reach 40, 45, 50. See, at this stage, what happens? The person is more calm and more aware of things that's happening. And more controlled, more stable. Same thing with the river here. See? Middle course. Let's see what happens here. As the river descends down the mountains and enters the plains, the abrupt change in the slope of the river went from steep to gentle, decreases the speed of the river. Number one. Number one aspect is that when the river flows down and reaches the plain, which is the middle course, which is the middle course, what happens? What happens? See? The river becomes gentle. It decreases the speed. See? Number two. The number of additional tributaries join the main river, increasing the volume of water and the load of the sediments as well. So in this middle stage, there are more tributaries coming and joining. More tributaries come and join in this main river here. Whereby, because more tributaries have come and joined in the main river, what happens? There is more sediments. So in this middle course, in this middle course of river, there are more sediments in the river. Because there are so many tributaries which have brought down the river, and along with the water that has come down and joined this main river, sediments also have been brought down. Whereby, increasing the amount of sediments or load in the river. Number three, as the river enters the middle course, the velocity and the load carrying power of the water decreases. I told you in the first stage. See, the speed of the water goes down. And because the speed of the water goes down, the carrying capacity, the transportation capacity of the river also goes down. It's not able to transport the sediments very far off. And number four, at this stage, the lateral erosion is more than the vertical erosion, which results in the widening of the valley floor. So at this stage, the lateral erosion is more compared to the vertical erosion, whereby the river becomes broader and bigger in size. So these are the features that take place in the middle course. Now, what are the landforms that are formed in the middle course? Now, there are some landforms that are formed in the middle course, but this is them. But you can just see the river here. See? This is the river in the middle course. See? Slowly moves down. And the reason, the reason why it has taken this curve is because of the slow speed of the river. See? And because the river is very slow and its speed is very less, power is very less, it will find the path where it's easiest to go by. And therefore, that's why it has taken the path where the land is much more softer, where the rocks are softer, whereby the water has taken a path there. The first feature that is formed is a meander. See, this is a meander. See? This curve of this land is a meander. When the water falls, falls down like, see, it forms a snake feature, which is called as a meander. At this stage, the speed of the water is very slow due to the lack of gradient resulting to the increase in the lateral or sideways erosion. Due to the slow speed of the water forms curves along the river known as meanders. So when the water falls down, and as I told you, because the velocity, the speed of the water is very less in the middle course, Unlike the upper course, it's very violent. But in the middle course, the mature stage, the river is very calm and gentle. Because of which what happens? It forms into or what I say curves. The river forms into curves which is known as a meander. Number two, while flowing the river, water erodes the outer bank of the river while depositing sediments in the inner bank of the river due to its view speed. So you can see here. While flowing down the river, see, while flowing down, it will erode the outer banks, it erodes the outer banks and deposits the sediments in the inner bank. See, it deposits the sediments here. It erodes when the river flows down, it will erode the outer bank. This outer bank is eroded and this eroded material will be taken down and it's deposited in the inner bank. And when this process continues, it becomes deeper and deeper. We'll go and see that further. Here. Third feature, when the meander becomes very intense, what happens? The erosion work between the landforms formed in the middle course, 
Now we come to the third one that is the Oxford Lake. How are Oxford Lakes formed? Now we know that as the meander river flows down, what happens is the meanders get more intense, there is more erosion, there is more deposition, because of which ultimately a small portion of the river is cut off totally, resulting in the formation of an Oxford Lake. So we can see here, see, the erosion in the outer curve and the deposition in the inner curve of a meander results in the formation of a big curve which gets totally cut off through the narrow neck of the curve of the main river channel that attains a straight path. The separate curve is left out and called an Oxford Lake. You can see here, see when the river flows down, this is a meander. The erosion is more in the inner curve, see inner curve. Inner curve. And there is more deposition in the outer curve. You can see here. Deposition in the inner curve, the erosion is in the outer curve and the deposition in the inner curve of the meander results. See? You can see here. Because of the deposition, erosion in the outer curve, erosion in the outer curve and deposition in the inner curve, erosion in the outer curve and deposition in the inner curve ultimately results to what is called as a Oxford Lake Sea. As the river flows down, the erosion is more in the inner curve. More erosion takes place. More deposition takes place. And what happens? More and more erosion is, this comes closer and closer and closer. And ultimately, they meet each other and this part is totally cut off. Whereby resulting in the formation of an Oxford Lake. So that's how you can see the Oxford Lake being formed. Next one. Lower course, the old stage. This is the last stage that's the lower course of the old stage. Now this stage is very, very, uh, the water is very slow, it has very less speed, the velocity is very less, because of which the river starts to depose all the sediments at this stage. Moreover, what happens? What happens? The river also, when it reaches the, when it reaches the ocean of sea, forms into uh, what is called as a delta. It turns into a delta. Many distributaries are created because of the uh, slow flow of the river and also because the river is constructed as the water flows down. See, the slope gradient, the slope gradient is the least and the amount of sediments carried by a river is maximum in the lower course. Due to the very slow velocity of the river, it is unable to transport the load and begins to depose the sediments on the valley floor. At this stage, the river becomes very wide. Because it's very slow, there is more lateral erosion whereby the river becomes more wide. And this is the landforms that are formed. What are the landforms that are formed in the lower course? First one is delta. The word delta is derived from the Greek word used by the Greek historian Herodotus in 485 to 425 for the transverse depositional feature formed by the river Nile downstream from Cairo in Egypt. The heaviest deposition occurs at the delta region. It is formed due to the constant heavy deposition of solid materials or silt by a river blocking the river channel itself. Here you can see. The deposition blocks the free flow of the main river and the river stream splits into many distributaries to make the water flow uninterrupted. This process goes on and the result is the formation of a triangular deposition feature with a network crisscrossed by several distributaries. So when the river flows down and as the river is about to reach the ocean and seas, what happens is that the speed is very low, speed is very slow and therefore as the water reaches uh, the, the plains near the oceans and seas, the river is blocked by the rocks and the soil. There's obstruction because of which the water splits into many small distributaries, many small channels, resulting in the formation of what you call as a delta. You can see it. When the river flows down, it's blocked here by the by the soil, sand, rock particles, whereby the river flows into so many small distributaries, many water channels, which is called as a delta. You can see here, see the main river flows down because they are blocked. In various aspects, the river will break up into small, small distributaries, forming into what is called as a delta. So these are the land features that are formed in the lower course. Now, 
Now the remaining part of this chapter, I suppose, work of the brain and so on, we'll do in the next class. So dear students, till then, please do revise the lesson and keep yourself updated with the class that's going on. Please go and look at the back and just try and look into the questions and see if you can find the answers as well. And then the remaining part of the chapter, we'll do in the next class. Thank you so much and have a good day.